All right. What's up, High Performers? Host Desi here with a, another episode of our Hero's Journey series. So with this person right here, obviously you heard a little bit about their uh, what they're about in the intro that I just gave, but I am so excited to have Wintana on. Uh, her and I met a couple years ago at a at a dietitian's conference, correct? Yeah, Fancy. Yep. Fancy. Okay. Was it the Philly one or the DC one? Philly. Philly. Was, okay. Yeah. All right. So for our listeners out there that have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, <laughs> there's this really big uh, get together with uh, registered dietitians called Fancy, where it's just an opportunity to get to know each other and to go have uh, really cool food and get a couple drinks uh, and maybe do some learning. But it's all about networking. And so I met Wintana a couple years ago and, and you know, we had sort of been trying to connect in a lot of ways of doing some things together. And I'm so glad, Wintana, that uh, we've been able to do this. So welcome to the pod, my friend. Thank you so much, Desi, for having me. I'm really excited. And I love all the work you are doing and our kind of value aligns and the way yeah. we practice things too. Oh, so likewise. To yeah, likewise, my friend. Um, all right. So I'm, I'm excited for this pod for a couple of reasons. The first reason is, you know, when I think of like a mompreneur, like you're you're that right now. And so uh, from what I understand, the kids are at school or or something, correct? I can't. I can't. This is the only way we can be great today. Is <laughs> there. I can't because or else like you recording, your kid is yelling or screaming. And then I have two. So they're boys under six. Yeah. So I'm a referee sometimes. You know. <laughs> yeah the struggle yeah it is it is you know i my five-year-old is actually out somewhere so you're probably going to hear her slamming on the door at some point so Wintana, for you and our listeners out there this is just the authentic us right now and mm -hmm. i'm going to steal this from you because you just said it but <laughs> the juggle is real <laughs> it is and i think any woman can understand this trying to balance and i heard i mean we'll talk about this later too but i hate the word balance because it doesn't exist it's something we idolize as like discipline it sounds good but it's not realistic um yeah. So we just, you know, and sh us showing up in this way allows people to be themselves as well, it gives people permission yeah. um, to be themselves in the most authentic way. So yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think that gets left out of a lot of formulas behind success. You know, I, I oftentimes, and I agree, like balance is in kind of in the eye of the beholder, right? And so whatever you view balance as, that's that's what that is. And so I'm really excited for this episode for a lot of reasons, but for our high performing mompreneurs out there, again, I'm going to say that word a bunch of times because <laughs> dadpreneurs doesn't hit the same way. Like mompreneur just hits differently. So I'm excited to dive into that story, Wintana. So if you could, for our listeners, uh, please introduce yourself. And this is one of the, my favorite questions ever. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your story? Wow. So, um, so hello everyone. My name is Wintana Kiros. I'm a registered dietitian, health coach, and stylist. Um, I have a private practice, a virtual private practice called Reset Lifestyle. And the focus or our mission is really is to help women gain their health um, and confidence through a sustainable weight loss through instilling one healthy habit at a time. And the best part for me is updating their wardrobe to reflect the best version of themselves. So it's so a whole person approach. Um, I'm in, I'm incorporating all my skills, training and hobby into one platform. Um, before I became a dietitian, I did modeling, creative projects and things like that. And then as I practiced as a clinical dietitian for 10 years um, and then did a side hustle thing with styling and doing creative projects and doing um, styling gigs, photo styling. I did all these fun projects on the side, but at one point I was just like, oh my God, it made sense because as the more I worked with one-on-one -on -one clients, the more I realized how I can blend all these skills and training and hobby into one platform. Because as you know, Desi, like as people gain their health and confidence, they don't know what to do with their hair and now body. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of married all these um, experiences to really support people um, be their best version of themselves, basically, mm -hmm. through, through. And one of the things we specialize in, not one, but um, the focus is really to help people in six different areas. And you heard me say this, and I think I want to be known for this, is that yeah. exercise and 
diet and exercise is only 33% of the solution. Um, you, the other 67% that really matters and indirectly affect your overall well-being is knowing how to manage your stress, your emotional health, um, and also your um, emotional mastery. And I think you do a really good job in, in this area. And for me is the environment factor. Yeah. Uh, where the style comes in place and organization and strategies and all those things because they all affect how productive and how you show up in the world. So when you wake up and don't know what to wear, it affects your mood and your mood dictates what you eat, when you eat and how you eat and how you well exercise. So it's all interconnected. So I help really um, uh, create a system and strategies to automate my client's wellness so that they focus on what's important. So they focus on um, their business, or most of my clients um, are entrepreneurs, mompreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, so it helps me to kind of automate their wellness so that they focus on the things that are important to them, but also reduce the decision fatigue. There are so yeah. many things that we need to decide, um, especially when you're in the entrepreneur world. Um, the last thing you want to decide is what am I eating? That's too late. Mm -hmm. What, yeah. That's one of the things I tell my clients. If you're asking yourself, what am I going to eat today? It's too late. So yeah. that's kind of like what we do here at Reset Lifestyle. So I'm really excited to kind of share my journey. Um, and so how, <laughs> the other part of your question is um, what my story is. So um, I practice completely different the way before I became a, a mother. Um, my motherhood journey really shaped the way I practice now. I um, so you know how clinically, <laughs> before you have kids, you tell your, um, I, I cover like maternal health at Hopkins yeah. um, when I was, uh, the first couple of years when I was working. And yeah. you know, you have all these recommendations on how you should eat and how breastfeeding is important and all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> all, all, the <laughs> and, all the things. All the things, <laughs> right? Like look good on paper, but motherhood journey for me, had shed some very hard truth of our real life and, and advice, you know, like the, the practicality and the application of, you know, recommendations. So yeah. for me, my now strategy is different. It's really meeting people where they are because my motherhood journey was so different, you know, and culturally, um, I didn't share this part too, is I'm, I'm from Ethiopia, East Africa. So I wasn't born and raised here too. Um, so that you have that cultural uh, yeah. experience as well. But that motherhood journey for me kind of shaped the way I approach wellness and mm -hmm. the way I care for my clients. It's really individualized, is really focused on where you are and what you're able to do. And one of the things we focus on is really your time. Mm -hmm. And your time really, it's not like show me where you eat and I'll tell you who you are. It's really for me. Yeah. Show me where your time is. I'll tell you how healthy you will be. Yeah, That's really the other way around. So for me, motherhood has really um, shaped the way I care for my clients and yeah. the importance of vulnerability, the uh, um, the importance of really authenticity uh, yeah. and being um, true and sharing your experience. Not, you know, we have the idea, like especially in our industry, like perfection, individualized. Um, it's the and yeah. It's it's the IG highlight reel. It's the highlight. Like, look how great my life is. <laughs> right. And it's clapped and celebrated. And you're yeah. like, that's how I want to be. But that's not who you are authentically. And that's not who I am authentically either. It's not. Yeah. It's not. So for me, the way I approach life and my story is really helping women where they are in the most authentic and vulnerable way. And even in my community, I opened up a community this year because of COVID, like church is closed, gym is closed, there's nothing. And yeah. I'm gonna give credit when credit is due, <laughs> you inspired me uh, two years ago, uh, <laughs> Fancy, to sharing the importance of creating community, despite the whole HIPAA thing, how you figure that logistics stuff out. Um, and I did, I got a lawyer to draft whatever, mm -hmm. whatever is said in the, Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, right. Whatever happens with the group stays with the group. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of like how I approach uh, who I am and how I approach uh, my clients as well. So 
that's I, what I mean. I hope I answered the question. No, because we're going to dive into a little bit more because I think, Wintana, there's so many really great things in there. And I think to start off, um, I had no idea that you were a stylist. Uh, it makes total sense to me now with your messaging how important that holistic view of health is because uh, we actually had a, uh, a stylist and confidence expert on uh, before we rebranded the podcast and the Men of Purpose podcast. Shout out to Nicole Russo. Um, but she talked about colors and she talked about confidence, which is a huge reason why I'm wearing yellow right now. Cause she was like, Hey, with your skin color, like you need to be wearing bright colors. And so, uh, shout out to you, Nicole. So that's the first thing. The second thing went and I wonder if you can shed some light on this and I don't, did I hear you correctly? So, uh, you were not born in the U S you were born in Ethiopia. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Okay. So I'm wondering too, and, and this is kind of like as a Latino, something that I've had to really start to explore, especially over the past year, um, there's this thing called like code switching, right? And so where, <laughs> thank you. All right, cool. We can talk about that, right? So, so exactly. So for, so for our listeners out there, if you're watching this on YouTube or on IGTV, uh, I just got the nod from Wintana. So we're going to really dive into that. But for those who do not know what code switching is, uh, essentially in my experience, I found that within my Latino culture, uh, having some privilege being, you know, growing up in the suburbs later in my life that I had to sort of act apart. Right. So it wasn't really honoring my culture per se, but it was really sort of honoring who I was surrounded by, which was a lot of white uh, men and women. And so um, I'm wondering, Wintana, now that you obviously born in Ethiopia, if you can share that story of what it was like to come to the U.S., what it was like, uh, your experiences with code switching. Like, I'm so glad that we're aligned in this way, too. I got the nod. But yeah, can you can you yeah. talk about that? Because I think it's so important for our listeners out there who are listeners of color and even just for um, our other listeners as well, just to further understand, like, where these stories come from. Yeah, for me, it all started. So when I came to the US, I was like 15. And as you know, it's like one of those critical age where you're like, it's so critical, it's my gosh, so critical, right? Like you have no friends, you're literally like, and that's part of the reason why I love my company's name reset It's just like, every yeah. life you have to have the opportunity to, to reset. So for me, my reset was coming here to the US. Um, when I was 15. And it was hard. And and the most funny thing, Desi, is that I ended up going to a predominantly black high school. Mm -hmm. So the culture was very, it was a culture shock for me because I yeah. come from British English, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, and there was only like, it's, um, there was only like two white like one girl or one guy in the entire mm -hmm. school. Yeah. Um, so that on its own was interesting because what my experience of America is white people, like in movies, right? Yeah, yeah. I've just, I mean, for me, it was just like, wow. Like, yeah. this is a whole, like for me, the hard part was dressing apart. And as you know, yeah. black culture is very important to look apart. That mm -hmm. was easy for me because I love dressing up anyway. But yeah. it was a shocker for me. Um, but the Ebonics was like, mm -hmm. I, I, I felt like it, it was really, really hard for me to understand for the longest time. And yeah. I was just quiet maybe for a year and a half because I didn't understand if they were being nice or mean. I didn't understand. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was like my culture shock. Um, but looking back, I think it was the best way to start because then you understand how the world works yeah. and, and being embraced and you don't feel necessarily like the only one because everyone looked like you kind of felt mm -hmm. like good in that way. But it was yeah. definitely a culture shock, like with the Ebonics, the code switching. <laughs> yeah. Properly speaking to your uh, teachers, and then you see all these students talking to their teachers any kind of way. And you know what you know is like teachers back home will get back, like you get punishment, like full blown yeah. public, like shaming um, mm -hmm. if you respect a teacher. And then here I am waiting for the teacher to like serve it hot, and the teacher doesn't do anything, and I'm like, yeah, alternate universe. Um, so that was like the biggest shock for me is just the slang, the, um, 
I guess, you know, even the language and how the relationships, you, you, I didn't know if it was a friend or a foe because it was just a lot to process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the beginning. Yeah. And that, and that makes a lot of sense too. Cause I think, and it's crazy that you talk about moving here at 15 because I remember I had moved um, from New Mexico to Arizona at the age of 13. And it's such an influential part because you're more or less in middle school transitioning into high school for you is obviously high school. Yep. And I mean, that's, that's like the moment, like, I don't think that we ever in our lives uh, lose that yearning to feel accepted or to Absolutely. feel loved or to feel heard. Right. And so I, I also want to look at that age as like a really, really influential age because one, our brain hasn't really fully developed just yet. And so we're still trying to receive our world. And as adults, when this happens, like it's our responsibility to do the self-care and the things that we need in order to, to present as our truest, authentic self. Right. And so mm -hmm. I, I wonder, as like you talk about getting here at 15 and then like this next phase for you is is motherhood. Right. And so right. can we can we kind of dive into motherhood and and kind of your hero's journey behind that? Because it seems like it's really molded who you are today i mean if you have two boys under six correct yes <laughs> that's nuts <laughs> that's, just, you know that's what? so nuts saying that okay this is part of the reason that um i love that you said that because the way motherhood was portrayed for me was painted in this rosy nice you know <laughs> like almost like, <laughs> you know, like i honestly i felt bamboozled right now like i'm just like <laughs> Not what I signed up for. Okay, hey, I got bamboozled too. Like I'm straight up. Like I don't know what I'm doing to this day. My daughter's five. <laughs> right, right. That is really. And then to me, what I've noticed is raising your child in an unfamiliar environment all the time. Yeah. So for me, I wasn't born and raised here. So the culture of like celebrating even different holidays. It's just different. Like, I don't know if I should introduce it to my kids or not because I didn't, I don't even know how to do it. So then yeah. I go to like my friends who are American to kind of facilitate the activity because I mean, I don't want my, you know what I mean? You're I don't just sitting there like, what is this craziness? Why is there, why is someone dressed up as the Easter bunny right now? <laughs> right, right. That's a perfect example. Um, yeah. Because I'm a woman of faith, we look at it for day of resurrection. So we have something. Absolutely to go with that. So for the faith based concrete, yeah. yeah, but the Halloween part is tricky for me. I yeah. don't know. I'm, I'm still like, I haven't dressed like my kids. We do have costumes in the house that they could play costumes, but I really don't, I've never been down with Halloween. So those yeah. are like, cause I never grew up with it. I don't see the point. Um, I'm probably going to offend a lot of people, but I just, you know, that's not like, for me. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's that. But for me, for motherhood, to just answer your question, is that the way motherhood was uh, pictured or depicted for me was how loving and caring, how amazing it was going to be. Um, you know, and so, you know, when you're nurtured in that way, when you're groomed to be a mother all your life, and that's because of where I come from and the culture that's, you know, you go to school, you go to college, you get married, you like, there was no like, other option like you don't go to yeah. college like what is that like we don't yeah. know what that is you know that's that's the way we're nurtured and that was the expectation so fast forward first pregnancy was like pregnancy from a book like everything was great you know like we did the whole maternity shoot like never struggle with breastfeeding like i would go to this breastfeeding support just to make sure that i'm he's weighing enough, you know, like in the first yeah. like couple of weeks is very important. So I'm like shaking, like, am I doing this right? You know, like all yeah. the crazy stuff, but no one tells you these things and no one tells you all the hormonal shift that's happening in your body. Mm -hmm. You're like lost in this fog. You kind of know it's happening, but it's just like a walking like a zombies half of the time. Yeah. So then, um, second, second, pregnancy we had a miscarriage and so we didn't even know there was no complication there was no feedback of to what went wrong and that's the worst thing to me right to yeah. me it's like not even giving you like explanation to what happened so you can explain it to your head 
right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So then second pregnancy was the most stressful pregnancy ever. So I have this romantic relationship with pregnancy and a horrible stressful, yeah. you know, it's just like night and day, literally night and day pregnancy. And, and, and then even in that process, right? It's been like my youngest is now four, even in the process of how much I literally lost my health mm -hmm. in the process of bringing life yeah um, was almost like uh, in my mind it's like why didn't anybody say this could be possible right or mm -hmm. why, why is this not communicated and why isn't this normalized like this happened yeah. to one in four women um you know all this like motherhood was just one of those like crazy roller coaster it had highs and a lot of lows and just like almost take your breath away experiences as well so yeah um so yeah, so my motherhood like experience showed me how much you can easily lose your health in the midst of something what is depicted as something great. Yeah. You don't even have control over um your own body. Yeah. And what your hormones are doing and how you're feeling and you're like how you see yourself and all of those things and the whole snapback culture. I mean, that needs to yeah. die. Like that yeah. that Unrealistic, unrealistic standard needs to die. You know what I mean? Because yeah. most of us, as you know, our responsibility is right here as a parent and our resources is right here. So yeah. if we snap that culture, like how is this gap gonna ever be filled for us to get to our health back? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's why it's very important to me and even in my process of caring for women in general yeah. is really looking at their responsibility and their resources and finding systems and strategies to meet the gap so that they are yeah. able to gain their health and confidence slowly. And that's what I had to do. I had to go get a pelvic therapy because my son, both of them were literally three months size when they were born. They were 8.5 and they were 9.5. They were tall kids. Big boys, yeah. Big boys. <laughs> And then, I, so that's the thing, it's like nobody talks about, right? But yeah. we make like incontinence a normal thing. Don't sneeze, yeah. don't like, no, go get physical. Yeah. And so that's why yeah. I'm very big on going where you need to go to repair. Because motherhood, you have to literally reset all after every pregnancy because the outcome is different. Your body does um, things different. And honestly, I mean, I'm scared to say this out loud, but I'm going to make a public pregnancy is trauma. Like it's yeah. really trauma to it your is. body. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just going through and it's like running the biggest marathon of its life. And mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you became a mom and delivered a child, you've gone through a whole marathon. You've gone through trauma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> trauma, marathon, call it whatever your body did its thing, but then you are left with this, thing that you need to kind of repair and fix. And unfortunately for a lot of women, because of the responsibility that they have, they never get the opportunity to really take care of self. Yeah. And we have this culture of selfish culture for you to do something for yourself. And you, I, I call it the mom syndrome, right? The, the guilt so that true. for just even thinking of yourself and taking a nap. That's like a whole guilt thing. Like you, yeah. how dare you have left your kids for like half an yeah. hour. So I even address that. It's like talking back to this negative self mom, um, mom syndrome, you know, like yeah. you, we need to be able to, as a culture to address that as well. And yeah. also, you know, I, I had to go get, um, in between the two pregnancies, I needed to go see a griefing counselor because I didn't ne have never knew how to process grief. And that I know now it's like part of what I do is I assess emotional health, emotional mastery, because if that is not in check, your emotions, again, dictates what you eat, when you eat, how well you move. So yeah. if you don't get those things checked, it will affect your health, period. Yeah. So I also went through a griefing counselor to address that season of my life. And for mm -hmm. me, it's, like, it's very important for any woman who's listening to this, and I hope it really frees someone, is that we need to live our lives in seasons. We cannot see an, our here and now as our forever. You know what yeah. I mean? If we yeah. look that way, because some seasons are dark, so you stay and have this hopelessness that continues to like linger. But if you see yourself as 
if it, if you could see your life in season, it's more manageable and able to cope with whatever it is. You know what I mean? You're yeah. able to ask for help in the season. You're able to um, get the um, the resources you need. And if you don't come to us, I beg, don't sit there and just stew in in sadness and hopelessness because. That's why, at least for me and Des, I can speak for you too. It's like we came out of clinical to serve people, yeah, help to guide, to help people to really step into their into their fullness, right? Yeah. So um, I'm I'm just hopeful that people see that. And so there was other things that I also saw, like even the the discussion of like a, after you have kids, um, the only option is um, birth control. Mm -hmm. And you get on these birth control, but you don't, no one tells you all the side effects of birth control that comes with like de depleting your vitamins and mineral. I wish yeah. that here's your birth control and here's your multi. Like yeah. what type of conversation. Again, I didn't know anything about that. I had to yeah. learn that, right? And I had to wean myself of those things to find alternative way to care for myself. So all these processes that I had to go through, um, um, has helped me develop program systems to say, if I needed it in this season, another woman in this season will need this. So yeah. I have deviated and created programming for my clients to go through the process, mm -hmm. help them gain in their health and confidence back by creating systems around what I did to help myself gain my health and confidence back. So yeah. just give you clinical experience. Right after the second child, my cholesterol, my A1C was off the I was like, excuse me? I was like, has my name, but what the hell is going on here? I know. Yeah. I was like, uh-uh. Like if I, if I am having this problem, and there's a whole lot of women who are like drowning with yeah. preventable metabolic syndrome. And I could not wrap my mind around it. And then yeah. that's when it clicked for me like a whole person stress is out of control because I'm in this new unknown territory like mm -hmm. my sleep is like barely there because you have kids that are waking up in the middle of the night because they need their parent right yeah. so all of these played factor but you know i took it step by step and corrected these things around habits i focused on the process i didn't rush to lose weight i didn't rush. i really step by step looked at the different habits that i can fix i really focused on the process of being well while yeah. I was going through this motherhood season. So it had served me well and I have maintained and now I'm in this season of gaining. I have gained 12 pounds of muscle um, mm -hmm. intentionally. It's not about weight loss anymore because the next yeah. season of life that's creeping up or rolling up, however you want to call it, is menopause. And that yeah. whole thing is, is a whole different beast if you don't have this healthy habits in check right now. Does that make yeah. sense? So that's no, kind of it, it absolutely does. Um, season. So I had to go through different disciplines to literally gain my health and confidence back. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, I think that's, Wintana, I think that's so important too. You know, one of the fantastic things that I'm seeing, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer, you know, success leaves clues, right? And so if you follow and look at the behaviors and habits of successful people, the thing that I'm finding with these Friday series that each and every time I talk to one of you, one of you high performers, you talk about seasons. And I really, really love that you talked about that right now and looking at seasons of life. You know, I, I want to go back, Wintana, sure. back to your, your second pregnancy, right? And so I know that a lot of people in our space who are dietitians do a really fantastic job of like on Mother's Day, like, hey, happy Mother's Day to those that have children, those that lost children. And, yeah. and, and it goes across. And I, and I think it's a really beautiful depiction of different versions of motherhood. You know, I remember kind of looking back, you know, there's five kids in my family, four boys and a girl. I'm the oldest of the five. Right. And so in between our, our, my, my youngest brother, like the fourth kid, you know, my mom ended up having a miscarriage. And I don't think that I've ever really understood the scope uh, or grief of what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that for me, like, as I'm listening to your story right now, it prompted me to be like, you know, I should probably ask my mom what that was like. And I wonder if you can shed some light on your experience a little bit more, because you talked about doing some grief work afterwards. Absolutely. You know, what, right. So what sort of 
what sort of feelings came up for you during that time? And, and obviously you talked about getting the grief work done, but like what habits or what things did you start to dive into to help you with that, that, um, that really painful moment? So when it happened, the first thing you think is like, what did I do? Like, what yeah. did I do wrong? It's blame something. yourself. Blame, yeah. like that killed me literally. And I was just yeah. like, man, I'm a woman of faith. So I got my Bible out and I said, God speak to me because clearly this is yeah. not my portion. This cannot be my forever. So yeah. I decided right then and there that I was not a victim. I was a victor over this, mm -hmm. whatever this was. And so um, I did a lot of devotions, like meditation was a game changer for me. Like yeah. I never, like that habit to this day is now five years. I do not start my day without having a quiet time. Like okay. that is like Monday through uh, Friday. It's a thing. I always start my day with the word of God, period. Yeah. So having a affirming scripture to back up my crazy thoughts was very important. So mm -hmm. I, I did that. And the other thing is I authentically shared my, I was vulnerable. I was, I was not going to be a victim yeah. of, of this. I said, and I know like, you know how you said um, success, it leaves clue. Yeah. Struggles I had in my life, I knew it wasn't just for me. It was for yeah. me to um, go through, not overcome yeah. because that's a negative mindset. You don't yeah anything you go through something going through mm -hmm. the important part that's where you learn the lessons and that where is the growth happens right yeah. so for me i knew this was for me to go through and help other women come through so the more i shared the more women and for every five women i talked to three of them had a miscarriage of some sort was so scared to share it or was so scared yeah. And so I found myself consoling them because they've mm -hmm. never done the work. Yeah. Right. And here I am. I had the miscarriage. What is a Friday? And then within that Thursday, I was in a griefing counselor's um, office. I was like, Beautiful. what is the strategies? What is, you know, what, what do I do? How do I move forward? And mm -hmm. the biggest lesson I learned through that process is even culturally, I'll speak from cultural perspective because I think that's important because it is yeah different perspective. Culturally, we don't talk about stuff like this. It happens. Yeah. You push it under the rug, you pretend nothing happened and you move forward. And that yeah. was for me the hardest thing because I couldn't share my journey with my family in a way because they didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know really how to console me. Um, but yeah, it was really hard. Yeah. And so what I what I did was I just went to the person who has my solution. Like these people are just looking at me as if I'm a crazy woman, but I've decided <laughs> I'm not a victim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will not be a victim. So what is yeah. the so the griefing counselor, I love her, Kate. Um uh I just love her. She straight up said to me, she's like, I know you're going to hate me. She said, I know you, you know, you're like a go getter. I already know that, but I need you to sit in the grief. Like the only way for you to overcome it, it's not. To yes. <laughs> it's not. Yes. Like, <laughs> I was like, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, I'm a high performer. I'm going to get these things done. I'm right. done with being sad. Like, no, right. you need give to me sit the in the pain. That's what I came in. I was like, lady, give me the polar points. How do we overcome this emotional <laughs> roller coaster? Like, that's how I walked in, honest to God. Because I already made up my mind. I was like, I'm not going to be a victim of this. Like, period. Like it happened. Yes. How do we overcome it? And, but it was the hardest year of my life though, yes. but it was also looking back the best growth happened for me. And even how I practice, how I approach life, how I do things completely changed yeah. in that season because I learned to stay, to sit still mm -hmm. um, and like really listen yeah. Um, and really pay attention. So she told me to sit and that grief, even to this day, if something is a trigger, you know, certain things are a trigger for me. Absolutely. Uh, and I am always vocal and open about my motherhood journey because I don't, I, my silence is a, a, a killer. Like it mm -hmm. really kills for me. So if I can share my, my shame, because that's mm -hmm. what it felt like at that time, 
Yeah. It really will free some woman. And every time I share my story, it literally frees another woman. I know that for a fact. So I'm yeah. all, always authentic about honoring, honoring, um, and for like, um, uh, those months where it's awareness. Yeah. I always mm -hmm. post about that. And even for motherhood, Mother's Day, I say, I recognize the loss, the motherhood journey of loss. And I recognize the motherhood of joy because it yeah. goes in together. And you know, what is a blessing and um, a burden walk together? Yeah. It's really up to us to focus on the blessing yeah. because this is always going to be there, like regardless, mm -hmm. right? So for me, sit, learning to sit in the sadness has taught me to see people in a different way. Yeah. That, that different season brings different growth, different stretching. Yeah. Um, so that was like, that I hope I answered the question. I think you did. Yeah, you ab you absolutely did because I think for our, our listeners out there who are looking to become the best version of yourself, right? You're looking to become that high performer. Wintana, you mentioned something that I think is so influential. When it happened, right? You're that you're a high performer. You're like, give me the bullet points. I'm gonna go do them. So one, you sought mentorship, which I think is so so powerful. The second thing that you did, and I think this is really powerful as well especially on the heels of, you know, this will probably, this, this podcast will probably get released a little bit more towards late August, but you know, we're recording in, at the beginning of August. Obviously, Simone Biles is a really big topic about uh, choosing to, to stay behind and not compete for her mental health. And so you talked about like learning how to be in your body, learning how to be present with some of the feelings, which I think is so, so hard. It is so hard to, to recognize the trigger and to not go back to past conditioning of possibly doing things that are going to be destructive to you or your family, but even more so to be able to sit in that pain. Yeah. And you talked about this gap too, which I thought was so great. And it's, you're absolutely correct. So let me go ahead and reiterate and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So, <laughs> okay. so we have your, our expectation as, as parents in this case, right. And then our resources being far below. Right. And so yeah. there's this like gap agitation that most people don't have the resources for. And I think it's so great that you've been able to take your experiences and create that for people, because I think the best impact style of people in the world are providing others with things that they have personally struggled with or have seen those closest to them struggle with. Right. And so for me, I'm always trying to become this like high performer and be there for people uh, because I didn't feel like I had that when I was trying to like figure out my world. And in yeah. the same way, you know, my, my pops, you know, dad, shout out to you. Uh, he was a high performer that didn't have a whole lot of skills. And so like we constantly do for people what we didn't have. Right. And so I wonder, Wintana, for you, what are you seeing in the space of helping these, uh, you know, prospective mompreneurs or female high performers? What are you saying are the biggest um, missteps on their end? I think we all can agree the idea of perfectionism because oh my most, God. I know, right? You said it. <laughs> we can just end the pod right now. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I help people unlearn certain mindset, unlearn certain habits, unlearn. Like I do, you know, Desi, right. this is the right. hardest. This is what we do is hard work. What yeah. we help people do is hard work. We don't like, what we do helps you get the side effect. For me, weight loss is a side effect of the process. It's not yeah. what we do, right? Yeah. So yeah. for me, it's helping. So most of the women I care for are professionals, go-getters, and even the testimonials that they, like my imposter syndrome file, right? Like you put that up, like so whatever, whatever you feel, but they remind you is that for them, it's really like they've nailed career. They nailed, yeah. home, but they nailed mother. Like they have, they're now mothers, but now because their responsibility is all the way up here and their resources right here, they're like, I can never nail this wellness part of my life. Yeah. I always because of mom syndrome, right? We feel shame, guilt for taking care of ourselves or for going out for exercising or even doing yeah, a walk. It is a walk, <laughs> it's a privilege. Going to the bathroom by yourself is a privilege. Oh. Okay, 
Desi, you already know. You I need to remember. take you off my off my headphones so I can hear so my wife can hear exactly what you're saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know these basic human needs are privilege in this season of life, right? In this yeah. motherhood, especially when your kids are young. Oh my God, they're constantly attached to you in some form of shape. So yeah. for me, the way I really coach and support my clients is in this way is really saying hey hey girl you are amazing you're a boss babe like mm -hmm. let's not recognize that okay yeah you don't lack discipline what you're lacking is practice so if you look at the definition of discipline it's just mm -hmm. practice. literally it's just practice when you practice something over and over and over and over again it becomes a discipline it's what you it, it's just yeah. you become it right so we be, we focus on becoming so one of the things the first thing I do with all my clients is do their why session. Why are you here? Because as you know, the, the mo model for change, there's five steps in the middle is called valley of despair. So you're in the, you're in the middle, you need to know your why. Because the first two, you're like, yay, let's get on this journey. Everything's yeah. great. And then second, second step, you're like, oh, this is kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third is like, oh, hell, like, what did I say? For, right so yeah. that is important so in that process those are the things that i put in in their mind it's like look you are a perfectionist but that's your kryptonite mm -hmm. like your finance journey and your wellness journey is a journey it's not a destination you will not be at a certain weight and that's it it never yeah. is that but we come and of course we think all the diet culture all the everybody telling us that we have to be a certain way and that's it but the thing is maintenance is the hardest part of achieving a goal right it is staying there and keeping it there so that's the importance why i i coach these perfectionist boss babes to kind of slow down and really mm -hmm. focus on your process tag these healthy habits to the things that you already are great at so yeah. you can build that confidence little by little. So a year from now, you're like, who this chick? Like I, I yeah. wake up, I do my meditation. I'm grateful for things. All of these things are habits that really propel you to help you um, be um, confident and yeah. also show up in the world that you are assigned to, whatever your purpose is, is an assignment. For me, that's important. If I can help you automate your wellness, you show up for your purpose and assignment in a bold new way. And yep. for me, that's my, that's my high, like yeah. getting a picture, like, uh, uh, my boss babes, when they do their, um, um, pictures for their websites or things, yeah. because they were so ashamed of their body, their pre body and whatever. But now they are even maybe have lost maybe 10 to 12 pounds or even 15 pounds, but they feel yeah. great. And they take their boss babe pictures and they send me. I'm like, I won. Like this, the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, you showing up the way you're supposed to. Now you're not. You know, like it's not about counting calories, people. It's about your purpose. Yeah. It's like yeah. you're showing up the way you're supposed to, right? You're pursuing mm -hmm. your assignment. You're pursuing your purpose. So for me, that's my high. That's really like. I've done my job to help you yeah. do your assignment. That's really big mm -hmm. for me. It's more than yeah. for me, nutrition. And and I'm, I've been recorded saying this, nutrition is not my passion. Helping people is my passion. Nutrition yeah. just happens to be a vehicle of how I execute that um, purpose for me. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I think perfectionism is the kryptonite of wellness, period. It, I'm so glad that you dove into the emotional uh, stages of change because that valley of despair, um, <laughs> he he or she is is kind of an asshole uh, because. <laughs> well, they, they, though, right? It's yeah, it's it's absolutely that part of. Is so important yeah. though, Desi, knowing that you're going to go into that season of life, but you have this why thing that you already have done. You you take your imposter soon, like file, or you take your why you're on this journey. It just yeah. resets you back to your goal. Like that's really yeah. what it is. But most people start their journey for change without having a vision of why. And for yeah. me, I do this at the beginning, at the top of the year with my clients in the middle of the year, I have a visual wellness plan. We visualize what we want to see. We categorize yeah. and only focus on four, three to four things that we're gonna first focus on in the first 90 days. So visualization, goal setting, all of those things are part of wellness because you cannot 
become what you cannot see, period. Yeah. You know, I have all the tools and resources to help you, but I can't lose the weight for you. I can't exercise for you. I can't cook mm -hmm. for you. But I'll give yeah. you like all the tools for you to do and be and know how. You know what yeah. I mean? And those yeah. are the things that I focus. It's like, what is your be do have? What do you want to see? And so those yeah. are your grounding, why power, visual that I help you coach you your first day one session with me. Yeah. So that's very important. So I think for what we do. High performance, I think our kryptonite is definitely perfectionism. Um, and I think it's for everybody, but I, it we, is. the way we execute our career, we can't execute in our wellness nor our finance journey. It's mm -hmm. really a journey. Like we have to yeah. take the wins and learns every day. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think that for our listeners out there who are looking to become high performers and are high performers currently looking to maintain, I think that maintenance skill is, is an art because it becomes an art when you truly fall in love with the process, which is your habits. When you yeah. truly fall in love with things that are fulfilling to you. You know, I, I just talked about this with our one-to-one -one and group coaching clients this week. I had said, I was like, you know, I'm not going to challenge you to train for a five or 10 K if you hate running. That makes right. zero sense. So why put the expectation on yourself that you should be uh, at a certain fitness range? You should look a certain way. If you have, haven't actually fallen in love with the process and you don't understand that this process is indeed a time bound process that is relative to you. I wish I could give everyone the formula of like, hey, uh, your life's going to completely change in 30 days. Like, if anyone has that formula, like give it to me. We'll go be billionaires together. <laughs> okay. But we all know it's it's chasing like wind, you know, like yeah. like for anything yeah. I like that. Yeah. Like, and then it's like this is our tip to anybody. Anyone who's giving you a quick fix is setting you to fail. Period. Yeah. Like that's yeah. why I never promise weight loss as mm -hmm. one of our goals. I promise improved labs because. Like I have track record for that. Like those are the metrics that we should be tracking, by the way. Right, right. So I have that. I could reverse helping you um get off meds because you know you're doing mm -hmm. much better. So those are things for me, metric wise, that I really help my clients. Yeah. But you nailed it, Desi. At the end of the day, what we specialize in is helping people master process. Yeah. Once we met once we help people set process, for me, exercising was I hated it. And the only way I overcame it and is now who I am is because I found something that helped me. I'm a yeah. woman who likes structure. Structure is freedom. I know this is oxymoron, but all my clients know this. It's true, though. Structure is your freedom. If you know what you're doing, you wake up, you do it. So now I do strength training because I know that's very important because in this season of life or what season is coming, that's critical. So now yeah. I have built that habit of doing two strength training and then two cardios. And I definitely do yoga just because in the in that season of grief, sitting still, the only way I learn how to do that is doing yoga. Yeah. Like breath, breath work helps like with the stress management of the, that crazy thought between your head. The only way you can kind of like control that is through your breathing. Like your body cannot do that crazy thinking and breathing at the same time. So by yeah. actively doing the breathing work, it kind of calms you down. So my new joy is I jump, I jump rope. Like I yeah. love, that's my car. I love that. <laughs> I hate running. That's why I can yeah. I hate running. You will not, because I'm Ethiopian. <laughs> <laughs> that gene never transferred to me. Yeah. But the thing is though, naturally I've always been an athlete. Like I was a varsity volleyball player. I played tennis and, 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 um, in high school and but that was my end my social end was being a, an athlete in yeah. high school um to circle back to that so that kind of habit even in college i played intramural volleyball and things so i was always active anyway uh but after motherhood because of my responsibility and my resources were like unmet i found yeah. just now wake up way earlier than my kids that's the only way to beat it ladies is yeah. to things take care of you before yeah. the responsibility wakes up really yeah and um now i do jump rope as a at the end of like my thing is my cardio that's my joy like i jump for yeah. literally like yeah. just put music on i'm like let's go and so yeah. for me that's not an exercise now i look forward to those habits mm -hmm. um, i love how i look now because i 
I, I'm not looking forward to what I was, you know, that mindset of my pre yeah. baby weight or pre whatever. No, I love my here and now because I've earned this body. Yeah. I have survived. <laughs> yeah. I survived yeah. two traumas or three traumas in my case. Yeah. And we good. We solid. You know what I mean? I've yeah. never been fit in my entire life like I am right now. Like yeah. to me, that's a good, great progress. Yeah. Nowhere near perfection, but progress. That's what's yeah. important to me, right? But I cannot wait what will happen with these habits that I've instilled like two years from now, what the yeah. outcome would be, right? Because I know it's, the outcome is going to be there. I just got to focus on the minute. And then one of the important thing, um, a game changer for me this from last year to this year is being interested in your wellness is different from being committed to your wellness. Yeah, 100%. For me, this year, what changed the game for me from working out two to three times a week to five times a week is my commitment to my health, right? Mm -hmm. I was committed, therefore I woke up early, therefore I went to bed early. Those yeah. habits have been a game changer for me, period. Mm -hmm. And so my labs are normal. Mm -hmm. I reversed all of those things because of those habits. And I just hope in my prayers that whoever is listening to this is that you focus on the process mm -hmm. and of how to be well. And that yeah. you look at all these six factors that overall affect your health and not just focus on diet and exercise. And that's only 33% of the solution overall. Yeah. Um, and that's how you win in life. If that's the formula that you ask, like, give me the formula. So we yeah. <laughs> that's the formula. You have yeah. to look at yourself as a whole person, not this diet and exercise thing. Because yeah. it's, a, it's a setup. That's all I'm trying it to is. do. It's a setup. Yeah. It's it's a billion dollar industry. You know, mm -hmm. they want repeat customers. That's why yeah. you, you, you're failing. It's not like you failed because you had all the formula. You don't have all the formula. You're mm -hmm. only operating in 33% of the solution. So I yeah. hope whoever's listening to this wakes up to the idea of seeing himself as a whole person and not just working on their idea of what wellness is. It's just like this, what that culture preaches, like exercise, count yeah. calorie, work to death, or also work out twice a day, which I'm like, now you're yeah. asking. <laughs> yeah. now you're now you're asking. asking for too much. I already now woke up before. I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So this is actually a good transition, Wintana, because you've already kind of uh, started talking about it. You know, obviously this is the can't believe I made a podcast. Right. And so right. I really love like the, the ending of some of these like rapid fire questions. And so I want to get started on those. Um, and it's probably one of my favorites. So obviously it's can't believe I made it podcast. So, uh, do you believe that you have made it? And if not, what would making it look like for you? I honestly, old me would have said, oh no, I still have so much to go, blah, blah, blah. But to me, I've made it for the season that I'm in. Like I, I made it. For I love that. <laughs> period. Like, yeah, that's where it is. It's like, you have to look at your life and seasons for the season I'm in. I am doing a great. And the reason is because I'm able to reverse. I'm able to do all the things that are important. Mm -hmm. Wellness wise. Um, even like, like how you see yourself, right? How yeah. you feel in your, in, in the way you see the world. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I, I've, um, I've arrived from that perspective, yeah. right? From the season yeah. right now. But did I uh, accomplish all my assignment and purpose yet? Not yet. Not <laughs> right? yet. <laughs> the season of my life with mothering full-time and mompreneuring part-time, mm -hmm. I think I'm winning just because looking back, it's like progress. I'm, I'm focused on progress, right? Where I, where I was five years from now, ago, or I should say five years ago to now is completely a whole different human being. Like even mindset wise, the way I approach things, everything has changed for me. But even yeah. those change, good or bad, has made me a better person in the yeah. way I approach life. So yeah, so old me would have been like, oh no, blah, blah. no. New me says, yes, yeah, we're doing really good <laughs> for this season of life. I can't wait for what God has for me in the yeah. next season of my life where kids are always at school and now I can focus on, you know, boss babying it. So, yeah. Yeah. 
I love that. I love that for the season I'm in. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Second question for you. Obviously this podcast is about the hero's journey of higher performers. So I kind of want to put you Wintana in the mindset of heroes, right? You can go towards like any of the movies, comics, like whatever, right? So mm -hmm. who is your hero comparison and why? And if you can't think of one, you can talk to me about who your hero is currently family, like whatever. Honestly, I love, um, I've consumed a lot of her in, um, information in this season of my life. Do you know about Brene Brown? <laughs> I knew exactly who you were going to say. <laughs> you know it. You know it. In this season of people, life, you don't know about Brene Brown. Mom, hey, pe people, people that know me think that she's like my hero. Like they already know that. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. Dude, we're good. We're like this. This is yeah. why, Desi, I love the work that you do because it's we come, we approach wellness in a different way. Mm -hmm. Um, we we step to our own drum, like period. Yeah. Like yeah. we know what works and we know long term. I think we have long yeah. view. Um, and I, I I don't need to explain Brene, um, um, Brene Brown to you, but she's an amazing um, professor and lecturer. Mm -hmm. And she really helped me in this season of life um, against culture to really flex my superpower as being vulnerable and authentic at all times. That's my that's my flex. I'm gonna, I'm gonna detach this mic and just drop it for <laughs> us right now. <laughs> yes. Oh, no way to Rintana, end, right? you're I you're amazing. It. You're amazing. All right, last question for you, so you can go back to. To going oh, no. back to the, the juggle is real, right? The juggle is real. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So you're amazing. Where can people find you? What type of projects or things do you have that we can support you with? Uh, everything that you put that you let us know about, Wintana, will will end up in the show notes for our listeners and our viewers Absolutely. out there. So um, where can people find you? What kind of things can we support you with? Absolutely. So as you have, as I mentioned, you guys can follow us at Reset Lifestyle. Um, that's all of our handle across board in social media and website. Um, it's R-E-S-E-T, then lifestyle.com. Um, and the biggest project that I'm working on, it took it's, it's taken me a whole year, but I'm pivoting to group coaching because my one oh one nice. is killing it. They're doing really, really well. So we're mm -hmm. now moving our business in into a new layer, which is the group coaching part. So I'm looking for women who are busy. This The programming mm -hmm. is created to automate busy women's life. So mm -hmm. I want to give them resources and tools to know how to do that. And then the best part is that's a 12, 12 months group coaching program. And the best part is it has a continual support that then you're going to into the community aspect that once you have all the tools, then you get to focus only on one or two habits that you choose that will serve you in the season that you're in, that we continue to support you in the community. So we have amazing community that we have um, currently as well. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> the community is only open currently for one-on-one -on -one clients that's their coaching additional coaching support and then the group yeah. coaching is going to funnel in there too but it's a, a whole person approach so if you are a woman who's looking for a community that uh has walked your season of life understand mm -hmm. what being a woman in this season looks like i'm your girl for that um yeah. I want to help support you gain your health and confidence back um, and so that you can show up in the world, in the space that you are in, in a more powerful way. So that's yeah. what we're about. I love it. All right, Wintana, I'm going to do a sign off real quick for our people out there. Don't leave this this uh, studio room, OK, because we, okay. we got to chat afterwards. <laughs> okay. You crushing it. Uh, all right. So for all of our uh, high performers out there, all of our listeners, all of our viewers on IGTV or YouTube, Make sure you do yourself a favor and quit sleeping on being present in your body. And please go give her a follow. Go support her and everything that she's doing. I, I love the fact that uh, vulnerability and Brené Brown is a part of all of this mix because I, I'm pretty sure I need to get a picture here and just put Brené Brown behind me because uh, I am on the same wavelength as you. So for our listeners out there, if this story really resonated with you, do yourself a favor. Don't let something like this just pass you by. Yes. Take a screenshot. Tag us both. Send this to someone that you really, really care about. Some other mompreneur, some other person or parent out there. 
where the juggle is real um, <laughs> and make sure that they that they know that they're not alone in all of this. And that's yeah. what this is about. This is about building community. This is about helping you to understand your past conditioning so much so that you can be in your body and know where that gap comes from and what you need to do to fulfill it. OK, so another episode coming at you, obviously, uh, this next Friday with a new story. Love y'all. Later.